So previously we saw that it is difficult to construct the obstacles uh, in the configuration space and it requires a lot of memory. And so although we came up with this breadth first search technique which would tell us if we're given um, you know, if we're given a map of all the obstacles in the configuration space, we can find the shortest path in the configuration space. Often that's very difficult to do. And so what we'd like to instead is come up with a search algorithm that could incrementally explore the, the free space while searching for a path to the goal. And so that's what we're going to do. And this is called a tri um, using potential fields, artificial potential fields that we're going to generate uh, and you can think of it as like a, a charged particle. If you put a charged particle in this, well, if you just put a ball in this landscape, it would roll down towards our goal location as long as we made our goal location lower than everything else and made a, a gradient there. But we'd also like it to avoid obstacles. And so here I put some obstacles. That they have this high potential. And so a rolling ball will try to avoid these obstacles as it comes to the goal. And so what we'd like to do is come up with some sort of general purpose technique which will tell us how much torque to apply to each of our joints in our robot in order to push it towards a goal. That's what we're going to look at today and it's some math and so we're going to do this on a worksheet. You've got a handout that you can work with. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define um, a U as our artificial potential field. Uh, and it's artificial because there don't actually exist uh, charged particles on your robot that's pushing around. It's this mathematical construct, um, but we want to be able to take the gradient of this potential field and get forces. And so this, uh, the potential field that we're going to use is going to be composed of two components. It will be composed of U attractive, ATT, uh, which is a function of our configuration and also a repulsive, so the attractive will take us to a goal, and then a repulsive, which will keep us from bumping into obstacles. Uh, and these, uh, A attractive can also be a function of many. We can add these uh, potential fields together and get a total control law that we're going to apply to a robot manipulator. Um, our solution to find this QS is going to be gradient descent. And that's you know, the same thing, the gradient descent. That's the same thing that we were doing um, with uh, BFS, um, but you can think of that as, you know, I've got, you know, X in this axis and U in this axis, and I've got some function like this, and the gradient, what we'll do is just follow the, the negative gradient. So, you know, what is the uh, change in U? And so, if we give any point here, a change in x is going to be um, as a function of u. So du dx is negative. We want to follow that negative gradient and follow that negative gradient until we get uh, to uh, the center here. And right away you can see you know, what are the problems that we're going to find in this. It works great as we're in this um, bowl shape here. This is the global minimum. There's nothing lower than that. But if you were to start right here or you go right here, you know, you're going to follow the gradient and you'll get caught here. And so this is called local minima. And these are going to plague our solution. Uh, this is the global. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're incrementally explore Q free. So if we ever find ourselves stuck, uh, at some minima, we're not sure if it's a local, what we'll do is we'll do some explorations around there and see if we can find a path down to a lower one. Uh, so we won't have guarantees of whether we've really gotten the local minima, unless we're in this case where there's only one obstacle. Um, but um, we have a path to get out of that, and uh, it'll be a probabilistic thing, and so eventually, with probability one, we can escape these local minimums. So loose solution is gradient descent. We're going to follow the negative gradient of our potential field. Uh, and so since this is linear, this is just the, the negative gradient of the U attractive field plus the negative gradient of the U repulsive as a function of Q. So we can do either of these. Now, you say, well, is this going to be a short lecture or not? Well, the difficulty is it's hard to construct potential fields 
in the configuration because you know the configuration space you know it's hard to even draw this configuration space uh, you saw that example for uh, you know a planar object that can rotate and translate on the plane the configuration space is crazy complicated it's relatively easy to test whether a certain configuration is in a collision but it's difficult to tell that configuration space now, if it's hard to construct the potential fields in the configuration space, it's even harder to compute the gradient of that field in config space. Because the gradient, you know, to, you know even get a discretized gradient, you know, of a certain point here, uh, in 2D, you've got to take, you know, points above it and beneath it and find the gradient in that direction and another direction, find the gradient in that direction. And in multidimensional spaces, you know, it requires even more calls. And, you know, that's, you know, assuming you had the field. These fields um, are going to, especially this repulsive and the attractive, are going to re require you to calculate distances to obstacles. Computing shortens distances to obstacles in config space is hard. It's difficult to do, but you need that in order to do your repulsive field, and that's just because configuration geometry is hard. Unless you know you've got that low-dimensional configuration space, we showed that we can build the configuration space for a 2D manipulator. So what's the solution? Well, we're still going to use potential fields, but we're going to do it in the workspace. And what we're going to do is we're going to track a potential field to each uh, origin of our DH parameter. We're going to track the origins of dh frames and we're going to track them to goal locations while avoiding obstacles you know what does that look like well let's draw my robot manipulator here's my robot and I have my DH frames attached to here, attached to here, and we'll put a DH frame here. And maybe we've got some goal location. You know, we want it to be at this location here, um, uh, with the arm coming down like this. And so we're going to attract uh, an attractive field that's pulling this point towards the goal locations, point this one towards that location. Uh, so that'll be our attractive, but then we'll also uh, you know, add some repulsive forces. Uh, maybe there's something dangerous here. Maybe it's a, you know, a lion. Lions are very dangerous. You know, we want to stay away from um, Scar the Lion. Uh, and so we're going to affix you know, some sort of potential field. So if we get close to this, we keep our safe distance away from them. All right. So now let's talk about how to do that. And the first we're going to talk about an attractive field, which is a conic well potential. And we do this because it's nice and linear. It's a place that you might start. Uh, what we're going to say is that our potential field is just going to be our... Um, our distance uh, from our place. So we have uh, the origin. We're going to be talking about the origin of our DH frames. So I goes from one to the, all your DH frames. It's a function of your configuration. And we're going to subtract that from our desired, our final configuration, O, Q, F. And we just want to know, you know, what is the total distance here? So uh, if I were to draw this attractive one, and let's say that my Q final, I want to be at 1. You know, my distance here in 1D is just going to grow linearly. All right? This is my U attractive. Meanwhile, 
if I want to look at my force attractive, then I just, well, that is just equal to the negative gradient of u attractive uh, as a function of my configuration q. And in this case, uh, you know, the book has a slightly you know, more complicated way to represent this, um, but it's really just the sine of oi of q minus oi of qf. Now this doesn't extend to multi-dimensions, and so if we want to write that in our uh, multi-dimensional thing, well, we do have to take that gradient. And so that gradient is uh, I'm going to be just, uh, you know, what we can do to make this generalizable, you know, we can just take uh, the sine We can just take negative of oi of q minus oi of qf, and then uh, we can normalize that, oi of q minus oi of qf. So we can do, but we can draw this in here now. And so my, my force attractive is going to be you know, I want to be moving in positive direction until I get here, and then I instantaneously want to switch and go negative. So if I'm above here, go in the negative direction. If I'm there, here, there. And so we've drawn that. Now there's a big problem here, and the biggest problem is this discontinuity here. It has unit magnitude everywhere except at the goal. <laughs> uh -huh. Which is zero. And so, you know, in any uh, robotic system that we make, what we'll see here is something that we call chatter, where we're, we'll, bounce, we'll go down here and we'll bounce back and forth between these. We'd like to have some sort of smooth uh, transition there. And so to do that, we need something that has a higher level derivative. And so we're going to define our u attractive then as the square of this thing. And uh, so we'll say this is going to be oi of q minus oi of qf, because we're going to apply these to each of our dh parameter frames. We'll take the square of it. And then so to make the derivative pretty, we're going to put a one half on the front, and then we're going to allow ourselves to multiply this by a zeta, a zeta i. And so you can actually make a different zeta for each of your dh coordinate frames, which makes sense. Oh, I'm sorry. We've slid that off the page. So we've got qi and qif. And we're going to slide this so we get a nice place to draw. And my f attractive, now I take the derivative of that. Again, my f attractive is just the minus uh, gradient of u attractive function of q. So that's going to equal, again, we pick this so it's pretty, pretty. So 2 times that gives us just minus zeta i times oi of q minus oi of qf. And so um, we're going to draw this. Um, uh, this. This term here is zeta. Um, I want to draw this again. We're going to say that we want to be at 1. And if I take my, uh, we need to assign a, a zeta value here. So we'll just have a zeta equals 1 half. And then um, I can apply my quadratic field here. I've got my quadratic field there. And then I have a Um, my 
linear uh, F attractive force. And so if I'm greater, my attractive force says go minus. Uh, if I'm less, my attractive force says go positive direction. Now the problem, the gradient force here uh, is going to converge to zero at origin, yay. So we got this nice smooth transition here. Uh, but it grows. Um, it grows linearly, but grows to infinity. Infinity. Uh, and your know, infinite forces on any robot, bad idea. Okay. So next thing that we'll do is we're going to combine these two together. And so to combine those two together, we're going to make our combination well potential. We're going to switch between those at some uh, distance d. And so my u attractive, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two cases. If I am less than d, then I want to do my parabolic well. And so my distance here is oi q minus oi of q final. It's less than the otherwise I'll do my linear. So my u attractive is one half zeta i. Um, my distance between my components, oi of q minus oi of q f squared. Otherwise um, we'll do my linear and we'll do d of zeta i of oi minus at q minus oi at qf. Take this quantity. Now the difference though is that this uh, term depending on my d and my zeta, you know, might not be a to get to z, uh, have a smooth transition. We'd like to have a smooth transition so I'm going to subtract off one half of zeta at i at d squared, and then I'll get a, a smooth transition between those two. If I take the derivative of that, um, again, this is negative zeta uh, times my distance, oi of q minus oi of q final. And um, this one here is going to be oh, my ratio of d minus d zeta i of oi of q minus oi of q f and then we're going to divide that by our total distance here oi of q minus oi of q f and so if we draw that here then we have um, this cute result I'm gonna switch and show you you know, a picture of what that looks like. And so you see our, our linear version here. We've got our parabolic well here. Uh, then in this case, you know, if I pick my my zetas to be one, well that zeta equals one, then we get this clean transition. So first we have a parabolic well inside a region D. And then we switch to be linear outside there and linear outside there, which means that inside this region here, we're going to have a linear transition. And then we switch to being solid outside here. Right. Now it's time to talk about repulsive forces. And a repulsive force should do some things. It should uh, repel robots from obstacles. And we want it to never allow us, never 
allow collision. And in order to allow, never allow collision, we should be able to um, go increase my forces to infinity. We'd also like it, them to have a limited range of influence. because we don't want obstacles on one side of the field to affect you if you're on the other opposite side. And so we want to decrease infinity. Uh, and so we're going to have it increase infinity as we approach an obstacle and decrease to zero at a specified distance away. And so my U repulsive that I'll use, I'm going to have it uh, be a ratio. You know, I want it to be one over um, my distance to my near to my obstacle. And I'm going to show that with rho times uh, rho, which is a function of uh, my dh parameter at configuration q. And I just want you know, one divided by my distance to here. That's going to go to infinity, and then I'll scale that for reasons that'll become obvious later by one half. And I'll multiply it by an eta so that I can increase this as much as I want. Now, the problem with this is this extends everywhere. And so I'd like it to only extend if a row of oi, if my distance to my obstacle uh, is less than some value rho zero. And otherwise, I'd like it to be zero. Uh, the problem with this is if I'm at distance rho zero, uh, this quantity is not zero. And so I don't get a smooth transition. And so what I'm going to do is separate, uh, subtract off here what that value is right in the boundary. One divided by uh, rho zero. And now I have this function which is a zero right at rho zero. And otherwise um, it goes to infinity as I get closer and closer to the boundary of my obstacle. Now again, my repulsive force here is going to be the negative gradient of my U repulsive. Uh, and so um, you know, taking the derivative of this, slightly messier, and which is why I'm leaving this as an exercise for you. Uh, but oh, it's going to be a negative. Um, my eta value lets it be scaled. It's just this distance here. 1 over rho oi q minus 1 over uh, rho 0. But then we multiply it uh, to give us our direction, the direction that we want it to go. And so the direction that we want to go is the gradient of rho of oi of q. So remember, this value here, uh, this, this thing here, is the distance to obstacle. It's really the nearest point to nearest point on obstacle. And <clears throat> uh, this gives us just our, our direction, but it's also, you know, scales quite largely. We just want to know the direction of it. And so we're going to normalize this by, um, divided by rho squared of oi of q. So now we just get our directional uh, direction to move on this. Okay, our challenge for our drawing here is to let our rho not equals one have an obstacle at one. So now I want to be repulsed from some obstacle here. Um, we're also going to let I um, and we're just going to say it's a point obstacle. Uh, point obstacle. So maybe this is a laser beam right here. Uh, but we don't want to get close. This is our 1D example here. So if I draw my uh, repulsive, you know, my, my gradient force, it's going to be zero outside here. And then it's going to increase up um, to infinity. Never going to get there. It'll be zero everywhere else. Which means that my, so this one here is my 
you repulsive and so my force repulsive is also going to be zero until I get close to it and then if I'm here I want to be repulsed away from it so that's what my negative sign here I get gives me I jump down and my force on this side is going to jump up like so so these are my repulsive forces that I have there. And you know, now we have finished our notes here. So let's see an example of what this looks like. So if I do this in 2D, you know, this is showing uh, my attractive potential. And you know, it's if I change my D to be zero. You see you've got this conical attraction thing. Uh, as we increase this D, uh, then you get this bull-shaped curve, um, which is my quadratic function here. I can also change my zeta value, and what zeta does is just linearly scales this. So you see the only thing that happened is I incremented my Z value. Right? So it's not that interesting with a Z, but what you can do then is you can put stronger forces usually on your more distal links of your robot. Now my repulsive force, you know, it takes wherever my obstacle is and it sends an obstacle. Again, this is a point obstacle. Uh, what I can do here is I can increase uh, my radius, uh, my, my PZ value is you know, talking about how wide I care about my my obstacle, so you know, row zero, and I can change my eta value, um, and I can scale these up. These are potentially reversed. We'll have to check that out. I like move that obstacle. I can change its zone of influence, and I can also change um, how much I care about there. All right. The other thing that I can do is I now I can combine these two together. And so here is showing my, you know, that that's my transition between the two, and my two obstacles. And I can move these obstacles around, and you know now I wherever I am I just evaluate my local gradient here, and I can follow that in. I don't have to actually have uh, this field defined for everywhere. It's a local property I can use. However there's cases where you can have problems. Like if your two obstacles are close together, now if a ball, you know, if I roll a ball down a slope and it starts behind these two, you're gonna notice it can get stuck right there and never find it. That is a local minimum and you can get it as soon as you have more than one obstacle. So we're gonna have to talk about ways to escape that, but that will be a later challenge.